Hello students, in this video we'll discuss recursion relationships for orthogonal polynomials. So given a weight, non-negative weight, w of x, on an interval a, b, and of course this interval can be infinite if we wish, consider the family of orthogonal polynomials. phi 0, phi 1, phi n, and so on, right? And so, of course, what this means just means, i.e., we know from previous videos that this is the integral from a to b of phi i of x, phi j of x, w of x dx is equal to 0 if i is not equal to j. And, of course, you can easily construct these measures, too, and the degree of phi i is going to be equal to i. And so here's the construction procedure. So how do you construct such things? So the construction procedure is as follows, right? Well, you want the first condition is you can just take phi zero to be phi zero just to be equal to one or a constant, right? You can actually even just normalize it too. So phi zero of x is just a constant c, right? And you would like that constant c to satisfy what? You want the integral from a to b of c squared, the constant w of x dx to be equal to one to normalize it. So c has to be the reciprocal of the, of the integral of this w of x, right? So c is one over the square root of the integral from a to b of w of x dx, right? So that's how you could construct the first one, phi 0. And then phi 1 is linear. So how would you construct phi 1, for example? You say phi 1 of x is lambda 0 plus lambda 1 x, right? So that was your phi 1 of x. You had to find lambda 1 and lambda 0. So how would you construct this phi 1? Well, what do you know? You need to know that we have two conditions over here. We have condition number 1 is that the integral from a to b of phi 0 of x, which we know is this value c over here, times phi 1 of x dx is going to be equal to what? It's going to be equal to 0, like so. And then the second condition, so that gives me, I have two, I have two unknowns. I have lambda 0 and I have lambda 1. This gives me one condition for finding out what that one of the conditions. And the second condition is we need that the integral from a to b of phi, um, phi 1, phi 1 squared, phi 1 squared of x, w of x, and there's a w of x over here too, right? w of x dx, w of x dx is equal to one to normalize, right? So I have two equations and two unknowns that will determine, this determines, determines lambda zero and lambda one. And of course, we can continue this process, right? The next equation will have a sigma zero, sigma one, sigma two, right? And then I'll have a condition with phi zero, a condition with phi one, that's two conditions, I'll have a normalization condition, that's three conditions. So I'll always have enough conditions to find out what these coefficients are uniquely. Now I would like to relate these coefficients to recursion relationships for the orth orthogonal polynomial. So let's do that next. So now, Let's consider this. So now let's consider phi n plus 1, OK? Minus, I, what I can do is I can, I can take phi n plus 1. This is a polynomial of degree n plus 1. And what I'll do then is I'm going to subtract off some number a n x phi n, OK? And these, of course, are functions of x over here, right? And so now let's consider this thing over here. I'm going to choose a n. Choose a n, choose a n, such that the degree of this polynomial, so of course, this is degree n plus 1, this is degree n plus 1, but of course, I can choose a so that the lead coefficient cancels out, such that the degree of phi n plus 1 of x minus a n x phi n of x is equal to n, okay? Of course, I, that's just saying that all I can do is I can choose the a n so the lead coefficient is going to cancel out, OK? And now, of course, what we can do is we can expand out these, this expression over here, then therefore phi n plus 1 of x minus a n, a n x phi n of x is a linear combination. j goes from 0 up to n of a j phi j of x. So you can write it, those terms as a linear combination of those things. And now, of course, what we can do is we can find out what these coefficients a, j are, right? So how do you find the a, j? Well, to find a particular a, j, you're going to hit the both sides with phi j and then with the, hit, uh, hit with the weight, right? So in other words, what we have over here is we have that a, j, we have a formula from, the, from previous videos, is going to be the integral from a to b of phi j, phi j of x. I'm going to hit it with this expression over here with 
phi n. I'm going to suppress the of x just to save myself a little bit of notation. Well, I shouldn't do it actually. A n x phi n of x w of x dx, like that, with respect to integral from a to b of phi j squared of x w of x dx, okay? Now let's carefully look at this over here. So what's going to happen when I hit it? phi j, a polynomial of degree j, with this phi n plus 1 w of x dx? Those terms are going to drop out by orthogonality, right? So those terms are gone. And then what do we have left over? So these aj's, this aj is going to be what? Those terms cancel out, so it's going to be negative an, negative an, okay? Pull that out of the integral. Then the integral from a to b of phi j times x times phi n of x, w of x, dx, all divided by the integral from a to b of phi j squared of x, w of x, dx, like so, okay? And so now, of course, what's, what do we know about these a, j? Well, let's look at this thing over here. So if, for example, let's look at this, this expression over here. This expression over here is a polynomial of degree j plus 1, right? And so I know that this is going to be equal to 0 because I'm hitting with phi n w of x dx with respect to what? So these are going to be equal to 0 for all j between 0 and n minus uh, n minus 2, right? So when j, so aj, this is going to be equal to 0 for j equals 0 all the way up to n minus 2, like that, right? Because when you get n minus 1, then you have a degree n thing paired with the degree n things s where the orthogonality doesn't take over any longer, right? So in other words, there's only a, there's only an a, there's only going to be a what? There's only two terms in this sum that correspond to n minus 1 and n. So we've just shown over here, as we've just shown, that phi n plus 1 of x minus a n x phi n of x is equal to two terms in this sum. It's equal to a n minus little a n minus 1 phi n minus 1 of x plus a n a n phi n of x. Okay, and so if we rearrange this, we'll get exactly what we want, right? So rearranging this, we're going to have the following. So now I can conclude that phi n plus 1 of x is equal to what? Is equal to a n a n x plus this a little a n phi n plus n minus 1 a n minus 1, phi n minus 1 of x. And so what I have over here is I have a three-term recursion. So this is a three-term recursion for these orthogonal polynomials phi n. And the important structure is the following. It's always the case that the n plus first orthogonal polynomial is a linear factor over here. This is just a linear term, a linear factor times the previous one plus a constant times two deeper in the expansion, right? So in other words, once I initialize this, uh, once I initialize my sequence over here with a phi zero, which is equal to C given by this normalization condition, and this phi one, well, I can find lambda zero and lambda one by this construction over here, two equations, two unknowns, I can plug them into this recursion relationship, and I can use the recursion relationship to generate more and more and more of these, of, of these orthogonal polynomials. So instead of solving a system of equations for the coefficients in the orthogonal expansions, what we can do is we can use this recursion relationship as an efficient mechanism for building these orthogonal polynomials. Thank you very much.